Hello and welcome to my video tutorial on how to write a review for Voices from the Middle. My name is Heather Anderson and I'm the graduate assistant for Dr. Witte. Uh, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to write a review and what you should look for in the articles that come through for Voices from the Middle. Alright, first and foremost, you're going to receive an email that looks like this. It's going to ask you if you would like to agree to review or decline to review. And you're going to click agree to review and once you do it's going to walk you to this site and as you can see uh, it says voices from the middle up to the top and you're going to click on pending assignments and all of the articles that you have agreed to review are going to be down here now I'm going to click on action links and from here, I can view the submission. So I can view the article, Picture Books Aren't Just for Kids, Modeling Text Structures Through Nonfiction Mentor Books. All right, so I'm going to click on View Submission. And for this particular article, this has been submitted many times. As you can see from the many revisions, this indicates that this are, these authors have submitted this several times to Voices from the Middle, and they have made revisions based on reviewers' comments. So I'm going to go ahead and view revision two. And there it is. As you can see, you can see the abstract here as well as the keywords. And then this is what I really like. I like that you can see whenever articles have been submitted many times, you can see uh, the revisions they have made based on reviewers' comments. So I don't necessarily have to go back and view the original submission. I can just see their revisions based on the reviewers' comments. So, ladies and gents, now I'm going to go back and I'm going to remind you the guidelines for writing a review before I give a mock review. Um, it says on our handy dandy Voices from the Middle guidelines for writing and submitted, submitting reviews for Voices from the Middle that we should be focusing on these questions. First and foremost, what is the significance of this article? Why do you believe this article will or will not be of interest to the readers of Voices from the Middle? And remember, this is aimed at middle school teachers and English language arts teachers in particularly. How does this article provide a creative perspective on the subject. Why do you believe or doubt that readers who are not specialists in this area would be able to comprehend this article? Why do you think future writers on the subject or are, excuse me, or are not likely to quote this article? In what ways does this article or what ways does this not advance our fields? Our field, excuse me. So these are the questions that I am going to really focus on while I read this. So I am focusing on the uniqueness of the article, the practical aspects of the article, and if this article is something that middle school ELA teachers in particular are going to be able to identify with, are going to be able to really take a hold of and implement in their classrooms. And if it's not that kind of article, then I'm going to leave comments on how they are going to, on how they may be able to, to be that kind of article for our readers. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the article. Uh, and I may have to go back and click on it. I may have gotten rid of it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go back to the article. And I'm going to scan it. Now what I like to do personally is I tend to... I tend to go ahead and print off the articles, and I like to mark it up. Uh, I'm an annotation gal. I, I do come from a background of being an ELA person. I'm an eighth grade English teacher right now at Stillwater Junior High. I teach pre-AP English, and annotation is a huge thing in my classroom. So I like to print out the articles first and annotate them. Uh, I do highlighting. I underline things that I relate to as a teacher and I write notes in the margins. Uh, I do this first, just like I would grading an essay. I do that first, and then I go and I, I review the article based on my notes that I've made to myself. 
So I'm going to scan the article now, starting with the first page. And if there's anything that jumps out at me, like uh, this wasn't quite logical, or or ooh, I wish they would have expanded on that, or oh wow, this really spoke to me. I think I should compliment them on this. Uh, I'm going to make a note of that page and that paragraph. The more detailed you can get with your art, with your reviews, the better their submission is going to be if they have to resubmit the article. So. In this article in particular, it says Miss Spencer, all pseudonyms, holds up a copy of Finding Winnie, the true story of the world's most famous bear. All right, so this is starting off with an antidote from an actual sixth grade class. So she is going, this author is giving an example, an exemplar from personal classroom. So I already know that I need to know more information about this classroom. And if I don't get more information about this classroom, then I need to make a note of that in the review uh, box for the author. As much information as you can get to get a clear picture of that classroom, the better. Okay, so I'm not going to read this whole article for you because you are smart people and you are able to do that on your own. Uh, with each article that you review, but I want to give you a sense of these are the things that you should be looking for as a reviewer. Uh, are the ideas concrete? Are the ideas uh, something that is practical for readers? Are the ideas in these articles, uh, are they specific enough that you could implement them in your own classroom? That Those are the things that you really want to look for. Another thing that you really want to look for are do they cite their sources or are the sources sparse? Do they have research to back up what they're saying? Uh, those are the things that really should be detailed in the article. So ladies and gents, um, I'm going to go ahead and give a couple of mock comments in a review. So after I have read the review and marked up the, the text, and I have known a couple of reviewers to, to actually do it in a PDF and make comments in a PDF and then upload the PDF, uh, with comments to Voices from the Middle, and that's perfectly fine. You can do that, and that would be amazing and detailed. Uh, you can feel free to do that if you would like. But I'm going to show you what I do as a reviewer. So I'm going to go to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, Submit Recommendation. Now it's going to pop up with this screen. Now since this is a second submission, uh, it's not going to have, usually articles have this little box up at the top where you rank it. Those are called rankings, and it will ask you certain questions such as how likely are readers from Voices from the Middle um, going to quote this article or, or such questions such as that. And you will rank it one to five, I do believe. Uh, and this doesn't have those rankings. Um, because it is a second submission. So ladies and gents, after you rank articles that have been submitted for the first time, if you scroll down past the rankings, you will see these boxes. Now there's a difference in these two boxes. This box right here, anything you type in this box is a comment to the author or authors themselves. Anything you type in these boxes, the authors can see. Anything you type in this box, only the editors can see. Many people make the mistake of typing the comments to the authors in this box on accident. And then they don't type anything in this box to the authors. The whole goal of a review is to make sure that the authors know what to change, what to revise in order to get better. The whole goal is growth and make sure that these articles are something worthwhile for our readers to get something out of so that they can take uh, information and implement it in their classroom so that we all grow as teachers and leaders. So what I've done here
is I have made some mock comments and then I've made some comments that would be best left to an editor and not put in an author box here. Uh, any comments that would be too harsh to put in for an author or authors, uh, you may want to put just to the editor. For example, this article is clearly not ready for publication. It needs heavy revision due to grammatical mistakes or lack of citations. If you want to say that to an author, you may want to put it in more eloquent language, uh, soften the blow a little bit. Uh, but if you clearly think that a, an article is not ready for publication and needs extremely heavy revision, uh, you may want to write that to an editor uh, to where the author authors cannot see your comment. But please make sure that you write that in the editor box and not the author box. So for the authors, again, as detailed comments as you can get them, uh, put them in for the authors. So for example, in paragraph two on page six, I noticed many comma errors. You may want to check this out. Uh, and then Another one would be, I enjoyed your ideas about text structures and teaching chronological order through picture books. However, in your section, blah, 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 on page do, 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 I would have liked to see you expand your ideas on how teachers can facilitate paired reading strategies and the discovery of how to identify text structures in more complex text after reading picture books. That is a detailed comment that the authors would really like to read to get better with their article, to revise their article, to make it more attractive for readers from Voices from the Middle. Anything that would make the, the readers of Voices from the Middle better picture uh, what the authors are trying to, to relay to the reader would be helpful to write down in the comments box here. Like I was telling you while I was going through, excuse me, while I was going through the article, keep in mind the guidelines for writing. Is the article significant? Is this something practical that teachers are going to be able to implement in their own classrooms? When you read the article, do you get a sense of the classroom that they're discussing? Do you get a sense of what the teacher is doing to facilitate the learning? If not, leave them a comment in this and make sure your comment is specific. Specific. All right. That is what I have to say about how to review. Now I'm going to really quick go over what the different recommendations mean. Uh, first and foremost, to accept means that yes, this article was amazing. It answered all of those questions in the guidelines in the positive. I believe that the readers from Voices from the Middle will get amazing things out of it and they will be able to immediately implement those ideas in their classrooms. To accept conditionally means that authors, these authors have a, a few revisions needed, but these are cosmetic revisions and they do not uh, impede the overall content of the article. To revise and resubmit would mean that yes, some, some revisions are needed and just quickly they can, they can revise this and resubmit to Voices from the Middle. Reject with encouragement to revise means that some significant revisions are, are needed. Maybe some content needs to be added or deleted. Uh, some, some major content needs to be rethought, reworked. And then reject means that this, this article really does not work for readers of voices from the middle. This would not be acceptable for this publication and it needs to just be rejected altogether and revisions really would not help. I hope that you have found this video tutorial to be helpful. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to email me. My email address is heather.d.anderson at okstate.edu.